All right, guys, I think we found a good spot to make our lunch. We've got a nice log right down here that's gonna help us out make our lunch. And I've got lots of dries and uh, smalls all around me here to help get the fire started because uh, we got a new tool to try out today and uh, it's gonna be fun, so stick around. guys there you go this is the new addition, newest addition to my kit it's the Halt Force Halt and Hatchet now for all you gear nerds out there we're going to get through the specs on this real quick but then we're going to go see what it can accomplish which I think is more important for all of us to find out um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, bunch of tasks I'm going to do just about everything I can with this thing today including a little bit of food prep so uh, let's go ahead and uh, get chopping and uh, we'll find out what this guy can do but first some specs. So here we have it guys. It's the Halt Force Halton Hatchet. It is 15 inches overall length. It um, has a American hickory handle that has been soaked in boiled linseed oil and uh, it is really well made. No burrs, no splits, no runoffs, nothing. When you get to the head, the head is a hand forged um, Swedish steel one pound head with a two and three quarter inch extremely sharp cutting edge. The fit and finish on this guy is great. The grain orientation straight up and down. Really nicely fit up on top. So at first glance, when you look here, you'll see like it looks there appears to be a gap at the bottom of the, uh, by the pole and out by the front. This is actually not a gap. It's just the bevel from the ax head to accept the handle uh, properly and make sure it doesn't tear up the, uh, the handle while you're pushing it on. There's the specs on the ax. But then we have the sheath. Now the sheath is a really nice, thick, durable leather that has a, a, a really nice welt on the inside. Um, it's not really uh, highly finished or anything like that. You can see that they've sanded it down, but they haven't uh, burnished it or anything. And you know what, I don't think it really needs that. Um, the whole, the whole basis of this axe uh, sheath is function. Uh, I did have some doubts at first about how this uh, lanyard uh, system was going to hold on to it uh, and I still have my doubts of how long it's going to last but um, I've had uh, snaps and sometimes uh, some rivets actually fail and uh, rust out or things like that before so um, you know what I think this is going to be as good as any others so here we go she'll just slide right in there and once you got it in, in position you give it a little tug and that's it stays in there pretty good no worries Maybe after a long, a long hike or whatever it is, it may come a little bit loose or a little bit of wobble, but there's a lot of room in the bottom here. So I don't know if this is like a generic, um, a generic sheath that fits multiple uh, models of their axes. I don't know, but it also does have come with a little belt loop in the bottom here. And I had just uh, tucked that little guy in there to make sure it stays nice and tight. So I only have to deal with one side, but works just fine for me. So let's get this guy off. See if we can go find a standing dead and uh, see how this little guy chops. All right. All right, guys. I did find this little guy. I'm having a hard time finding a standing dead. So um, I think we're going to uh, chop up this guy here and uh, we'll at least we'll have, we'll get our, uh, our firewood collection started right now. Let's see what this little guy can do here. I'll give you a quick look at this. Well, you can see right here, this is a piece of hemlock. It's got some really deep, long, uh, smooth cuts right in there. Took out those pieces, no problem. All right, so I did find this big tall guy here. Uh, seems to be sturdy. Yep, nothing's gonna fall on my head. So we're gonna chop this guy down using this little hatchet. We'll see how it goes. 
Now, just to be on the safe side, you don't want to be, uh, you want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to inhibit your swing as you're coming down, like maybe these sticks or these branches here and behind me. So let's just get rid of these guys. Make sure, make sure that they're not going to, uh, you know, deflect my swing and then possibly uh, uh, send my axe into my leg. So we'll clear those out of the way. Now we seem to be uh, in a pretty smooth area. And you also want to give this guy a couple of shots and make sure that a big chunk of that's not going to fall down right on top of your head, which, uh, you know, it wouldn't take much to knock you out if you're not expecting it coming. So, uh, go ahead and get my leg in the right spot here. But it is really hard. Well, it will get some feather sticking done. I'm not really good at this even with a knife, but I'm pretty sure that'll take a flame if I can keep it dry. I know I keep repeating myself about, uh, you know, um, 
making sure that you've got nothing in your way and all that and uh, being conscious of where your swing's gonna go um, taking your time if if you find yourself getting tired when you're using one of these little guys uh, or even a larger axe uh, just put it down for a while relax yourself have a coffee do whatever you got to do um, Although they're excellent tools to use in the woods, they can be dangerous if you're, uh, if you're fatigued and you're cutting corners and that kind of thing. So your best bet is to, uh, is to um, really be conscious of what you're doing. So basically, I've got this, uh, this little dead guy here that uh, I took off all those, uh, all those uh, smalls. I'm just gonna chop this guy up into a decent sized kindling. And uh, or from for you know like the thumb size smalls up until around uh, an inch and a half uh, or two inches maybe, and uh, we'll use these guys for uh, part of the fire as well. So let's just get these guys get this little guy chopping, see how she does. All right, now we're over an inch. Coming up to say inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Now we're definitely inch and a half. Take a look at those cuts. This thing's mean, boy, I'm telling you. We got to get this uh, Cornish hen here cooked in a hurry. We don't have that much time to wait around for uh, for the uh, you know for a whole for a whole bird to uh, get clean. So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna clean off my hand here a little bit. Cut off that piece of fat. There we go. Put that in the fire. We're gonna locate the neck. Slide that down to the butt on one side and uh, trying to get any goop all over our Oh. Uh, right through our Tupperware lid. Don't matter though. There we go. So, we're going to open up our bird a little bit. We're going to locate that breastbone. And there it is. See if we can pop that up nicely. There we go. All right. Now we're going to see if we can get our stick to hold this guy up quite nicely. And we'll uh, cook him over the fire. And we'll have a little uh, spatchcock chicken here.
If you take a look at the profile on this guy, it is designed to be a cutter. It's a small, it's a small, uh, thin uh, little hatchet. Uh, a lot of hatches are built like, like wedges with handles on them. And uh, yeah, they're great for splitting, but that's about all they're good for. Now, if you're splitting a log, coming down on it through the center, uh, you may have problems uh, with this ax uh, because it doesn't have a, a giant wedge on it. But if you're gonna grab the log like I was doing in this video and splitting them like this, um, having a cutting ax is actually better for that than having a splitting ax. Uh, I find you drive it right through the log first and then you're able to wedge it, no problem. Um, so for me, uh, this guy and a profile like this is a win for my application bushcraft that kind of thing but uh that's entirely up to you yeah <laughs> we're definitely going to lose that leg i don't know if you can see it back there just dangling but uh oh well shit happens eh So there you guys have it, the Halt of Forest Halton. Now, this guy with that little one pound head packs a wallop. Uh, it's small, the profile on it allows it to dig real deep when you chop with it. The uh, handle is comfortable in many positions, up, tight, up top when you wanna do fine carving, down low when you really wanna swing, and anywhere in between, it's comfortable. The balance on it is uh, pretty nice. There you go, pretty nice. The um, Overall build, the design, I like everything about this thing. It's a nice lightweight hatchet that you can just swing and bash the crap out of anything you need to. This, this thing really is great. So Oh yeah, looks good to me, boys. See if we can get this to balance nicely. Pull our chicken off without destroying it. We can get rid of this now. So guys, as usual, if anything happens after this, uh, after this video, uh, say if it fails for whatever reason, uh, I'll do a shoot another video, but I highly doubt anything's gonna happen to this. Uh, this truly is a premium, a premium built axe. It's a uh, quality, quality, quality. Can't really say much, and you you know that it's quality. Uh, once you hold it in your hand for a couple of minutes and you're swinging it around, you know for sure it's not no uh, department store axe. Um, just uh, just amazing. But uh, anyway, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and eat this guy up here. Then hike out. I don't know if you could tell, but it's starting to get pretty dark. The days are still pretty short up here in Canada, so. Um, anyway, I'm going to eat this up, enjoy the rest of this fire, and pack on out of here. So, thanks a lot for watching. You guys get out, explore, and I'll see you in the next one. Hmm. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, you may find one of these other ones interesting. And while you're here, since you made it this far, why don't you hit that subscribe button.